What's up guys and welcome to another video. In today's video, we are at Blade Show 2022 once again. And this time we're checking out the Squid Industries booth. Now, obviously we've done a lot of squid, a lot of stuff with Squid Industries in the past and uh, they've had a little bit of craziness going on here at the Blade Show. So uh, Lucas, what's up, man? How you what's been? What's up, Will? Good to it's, see you, man. It's nice to see you too. You guys have had a lot going on since we've yeah. last seen you. We've upgraded quite a bit. I can see that. So the booth is, it's bigger this year. Oh yeah, it's two and a half times the size we did last year. <laughs> Before, we were right next to Elden and Flytanium. Right. And so we took over that spot. And then two more spots down over there opened up. So now we've got a total of five booths. We've got three over here for the flippers. I'm sorry, we've got three over here for the products and two over there for the flippers and a maintenance table so we can tune our product for free. So essentially, you've kind of taken over this area specifically to have an available area for people to flip. Yeah, that's right. There's just so many people last year. We really wanted to give them enough space so that the entire area was safe for the rest of the show. We just don't want anyone to have people in harm's way. Right, that makes sense. Because I think that's one of the biggest problems at Blade Show is obviously we're walking around with knives, throwing right. them. Yeah. It's a little dangerous to be yeah, around it, us. It can be, and it can be frightening. You know, people are trying to get through, and some people want to see the product, and it's it's hard when there's knives being thrown really close to your face, and you've never seen a balsam before. So I really yeah. want to move those slippers away. So newcomers can feel comfortable. Yeah, that's that's really fair, dude. Okay, so what have we got going on now that we've got the uh, the Squid Industries? I can see the logo is obviously red RGB now. <laughs> yeah, so last year we had this bright, tiny little neon sign. You guys remember? It was kind of similar size to I the do. white logo yep. up there. Well, we it's a lot bigger to, now. We wanted to go a little <laughs> bit bigger. Right. So we decided to upgrade to a, a large RGB one. It's got like 130 programs. It can do all sorts of crazy shit. Is it like fully like addressable RGB? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bro. I, so later on, if you're down to hit up the Squid Nishies rave, we're going to host it at the end of the show today. So bring your uh, yeah, bring your friends. Oh, dude, I'll, I'll come to the Squid Industries rave. I'm down for that. That's right. <laughs> OK, so you've got a few products here that are yeah. new. What What is this? Uh, where do I want to start? Where do you want to start? Oh, crap. Uh, that is such a hard question. I mean, the Madco looks pretty cool. Yeah? So, let me talk about the Madco a little bit. So, the Madco was a natural thing for me. A lot of people obviously wanted the Mako blade to be hardened steel, right? right? Obviously, the 304 stainless and the regular one, not very durable. So, having a hardened 154 blade was the first step. The second right. thing was having bushings. Of course, everyone wants bushings. It's probably the best pivot system. So we chose, we chose hardened steel and bushings. And the last detail I wanted to add to separate it from the regular Mako was to have it channel titanium. And I think it's been a long time coming. A lot of people have been wondering like, when are we gonna get channel titanium? And so like, I thought I could nail three birds with one stone, yeah. the Mako. And a lot of people ask me, Lucas, why not just start a brand new product line? Well, for one, I really liked the Mako design and I felt like upgrading it for the people who are already familiar with the product line there, they know how it flips. And even though it's a little bit different, they'll know that this is a good product already yeah. from the name of the Mako. So the Madco was a, is basically a spin-off name. I changed the eye to make it you know, a little bit angry, a little bit irritated. So I like it. That was a, a name that kind of naturally transformed. It was given to us by Roy, so. Dude, that's so cool. Okay, so do you mind if I flip yeah, it? Ahead, yeah. Oh my god. I love the sound of this thing, dude. Yeah, sound was definitely a big part for us. It's something I tried to nail. Just oh, here, wait, say that again for me. Sound was definitely a thing I've been trying to nail because a lot of people have been asking about, you know, different sounds and I know that a lot of people seem to really enjoy their ringing. So, we haven't had something ring this hard since the you know, the OG Squid Trainer. Yeah, I remember how much the OG rang. I really liked it on mine, but I know it's it's a it's a different thing for some people. Some people like it, some people don't. One yeah. thing I'm noticing though is as I flip it, the ring is only happening while I'm flipping and then it stops yeah, when honestly, I stop. It's, it's a really interesting phenomenon. I have no idea how to explain it, but uh, it was intentional for sure. Wow, so yeah, you guys probably put a lot of work into that, huh? Oh yeah, a lot of work, <laughs> a lot of trial and error. Dude. This thing is really sick. I love, I honestly, I think the idea of using a titanium, like making a titanium trainer, this is your first titanium trainer, is that right? Well, kind of. Technically the first one is gonna be this guy right over here. Oh, right. Which is right. the Tsunami trainer. This one is releasing at Blade Show for the first time. So most people are probably by now familiar with our, our flagship model, the top of the line, the Tsunami. Right. And so a lot of people requested a trainer version for various legality purposes or work purposes. So we decided to come out with the Tsunami Trainer and 
Uh, ideally, it's as close to the real one as possible. So we try to balance it just like the live blade. Right. I think that we've gotten pretty dang close to it. So you wanted you wanted to kind of get the live blade experience as close as possible. That's right. Yeah. Usually with other product lines, we'll have the trainer blade a slightly different flipping experience because I want each blade to have its own flipping story. But I felt like for the tsunami. It just felt natural to me to try to try to match the profiles as best as I could. I totally understand that, dude. I think that this is, I mean, this feels great. This feels very similar, I think, to yeah. the original Tsunami. I think I've got some work to do, but it's really close. It's really close. Let me, yeah. do you mind if I flip both? Yeah, 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 go ahead. All right, let's see here. I mean, it's really close. Yeah, it's, it's not. It's almost there. It's it's like ninety eight percent of the way there at least. Two percent. All right, good enough for me. I'm calling it quits. <laughs> <laughs> You're done with that. Okay, so obviously the tsunami is something that's existed, and so the trainer I feel like is a pretty standard evolution. The Madco, that's pretty crazy, but. I remember you talking about this on Instagram before I even got here. Yeah, yeah, let's talk so, about the swordfish. The swordfish. All what right. in the world have you done here? So, what we got here is aluminum, a lot of it. A lot of aluminum. A lot of it. So, what I wanted to always try was a pinless design. I feel like pinless has obviously been around. Other makers like Julian have really pushed it forward. Yeah. And we've always wanted to do it. But, you know, our platform was mainly on aluminum and I wanted to have a lower end pinless design. So, that was my initial inspiration for this. The other thing too is that I wanted to try an aluminum blade just because of the manufacturing capabilities of it and the optimization for that. So, I felt like trying to combine the aluminum blade with the pinless design in an all aluminum construction was kind of like an engineering challenge that I took upon myself to try to do. Oh. And I feel like it's been relatively successful. So, you know, we did extensive you know, durability testing and handle gap testing to make sure that this system, this stopping system was robust enough. So I, I feel confident that people are going to be able to enjoy it and not worry about things like handle gap because the 7075 is honestly really durable. Oh, so it's all 7075 yeah, and it's all aluminum. Handle. That's correct. Okay, so I feel like that makes more sense too because I think one of the problems that people have had with pencil systems in the past is utilizing a softer material and a harder material at yeah. the same time, right? right? But if it's all aluminum, it's all the same hardness. Right. right. Also, it's a relatively light design. It's a little bit heavier than the Nautilus, but still lighter than the other products. And so right. there's not a lot of mass flying around and crushing those areas. And I've also, it's hard to see on camera and even off camera, but I've added small areas where there's additional material on the contact area, so it's almost like two hills that are crushing and flattening into each other, so there's additional reinforcement on the contact areas. So, Whoa. the handle gap should last a really long time. Other detail that I want to point out is that obviously aluminum is not as strong as hardened stainless steel. Yeah. So to, to ensure the blade doesn't bend, I've added this kind of this supporting rib right down the middle there, and that resists bending so that when you drop it, you're not going to have to worry about it. About it. Oh, that makes a lot of sense. Honestly, I just thought the rib was for style. I think it looks really cool. <laughs> Thanks. I, mean, I think it looks cool too, but it's the main purpose of that is a lot of people think that it's supposed to stop the blade because they don't see the pinless design. Yeah. But yeah, it's purely just to support the blade for no, for you know, against bending. All right. Do you mind if I flip this thing? Sure, yeah, yeah, go for it. All right. Oh my God. I like that. That's really good. So one thing that was really tough for me to figure out was the balance point that I wanted for this product line. I've tried for weeks to really dial it into a specific point, and honestly, it was, it was challenging for me. I, I wanted the experience to be different than all the other products, and it's it's hard to do that while also maintaining um, you know a good balance point because I feel like everything we've done is pretty good already. So what we tried actually was that I've machined a couple of holes inside the Chanwich area similar to the Tsunami. And so there's actually two recesses inside each handle where you can install small weight pins. Oh, very small really? ones. They don't add a lot, but that one doesn't have any, but try this one. This one has one weight pin installed and it's actually, it's actually- Oh, whoa. I mean, with the aluminum, I would assume that any like weight pin made out of steel would have a pretty significant effect. Right. So I, I, I found that most people enjoy the, the one pin. So I think that, that's ideal because obviously people get to choose between more neutral or more handle bias. No, that's great. Honestly, the the whole like evolution of Balasongs having more adjustable weight systems is so cool to see. And I really, really like seeing more and more of it. So this yeah. is great. Also, forgot to mention bushings. 
Oh, it's on bushing. That's right. Oh yeah, those tolerances are fantastic, dude. Yeah. One last thing I want to point out, obviously you can tell with this one, is that because it's obviously all 7075, we have the capability to anodize it in so many different color combinations. So, I mean, the possibilities are endless. Oh my God. So you could have three different colors on one knife. I mean, you could have five technically. Yeah, because it's channel, it's not channel. You could have each, <laughs> you could have each of the four pieces of the handle a different color right. and the blade. That's right. Oh my God. You could make a pride knife. We could have a, we could have a pride swordfish. Okay, dude, this is so cool. Yeah. Wow, I didn't even think about that with the aluminum. Yeah. That is such a good idea. Okay, it'd be like your logo back there, really. Right. It'll look just like that. <laughs> oh. That closed? Sounds great. Oh. I am so impressed with this thing, dude. Thanks, man. I, I honestly, I put so much time and effort into that product because I knew that the design was going to be controversial from the start just because of the nature of the pinless design and the aluminum. So I wanted to make sure that the construction is really solid, the balance is perfect, and uh, I feel like we've done a pretty good job with these first prototypes. I really feel like you nailed it on this thing. At least for me, I'm Thank definitely going to be picking one of these up. This is so cool. Yeah. Wow. Okay, I need to I need to stop talking. I need to, I need to stop flipping this thing, even though it's addictive, because we have other stuff to talk about, don't we? Yeah, we got uh, one more knife here on the table that we got to discuss. What are we? What is it? It's the hydro. Oh, right. So those of you who might remember, you might remember Will from last year. We showed off the hydro, the very first prototype of that one. So this one is a little bit different, and it's closer to the finalized model that we're going to release hopefully later this year. Really? So the handle's relatively unchanged. Nothing else is, is really different. What did change was the blade profile and the spacers. So the first thing we changed was changing it from a harpoon to a tanto, and then we also added some cutouts there for additional aesthetic detail. That inspiration came from the Tachyon, yeah, because that was one of my favorite ballads when I was collecting. So I really wanted to pay some homage to that and and add my own kind of style. Oh, I love that. There. In addition to that new blade style, we have new spacers. And these spacers, it's kind of hard to capture on camera, but you're actually able to put, again, small little pins in there so you can change the balance. I, you know, I think that that option is really cool for people to be able to choose their own balance points. So I want to add it on, on all products going forward if I can. Dude, that's so sick. That's really, really cool. I yeah. love that. Thanks. So yeah, why don't you uh, let me know what you think? Yes, please. OK. I love those cutouts. That's really cool. Thanks, that's a great homage. I, wait, one second. <laughs> oh my god, dude. I haven't played with this late of a prototype before. Yeah. The one I had with that was the first prototype, right? Well, that's basically completely different. Oh my god, this is great. This is really good. <laughs> I'm not I'm not kidding. This is this is literally the first time I flipped this thing. This is wild. This is really good. Thanks. Oh my god. I like honestly, I, I really like the fact that it is sandwiched because the fact that it's sandwiched gives you so much grip around the handles. Right, take obviously. a look at the uh, side of the handles. Pay attention to the there's actually a texture that runs. Oh. I don't know if you can get that on camera, but it's a really tight fine detail texture that goes around the entire contour of the handle. Oh my god, yeah, so there, there is this really, really beautiful, fine texture going around the yeah. side of the handle. We chose not to go with the jimping that we typically do on all of our other products, like the Swordfish. Yeah. Wow. It's got a no. cool detail uh, that, And texture. it works, too. It really, you can feel a little bit of grip from that texture. Right, yeah. Wow, dude. This is really incredible. Very good job. Thank you. Oh my god, thank you. <laughs> Oh. Yeah, I like the way this thing sounds a lot. It's, it's like near silent almost. It, it kind of rivals the, the Nautilus almost. Yeah, I, I'm really impressed with that. Okay, cool. One thing I love about Squid Industries and what you guys do and what you've done really since the beginning is like now people have, you know, the crack rack and then they look at a ballast song that's like an aluminum channel design yeah. and that's normal. Right. Right? Yeah. But you guys 
created that and then you're going and like you could have stayed with that you go you could have produced aluminum channel ballast songs forever but now you've got stuff like i mean the, this is insane this like this design is incredible you've got stuff like the madco happening and then you've got really new stuff like this like i don't know what what blows my mind all the time is just the willingness that you have to kind of push the idea of what a ballad song even can be yeah. and the fact that it works so well because <laughs> if you were doing it and it was weird and it was weird for the sake of weird then like sure whatever but it's good yeah i try to push the boundaries as as much as i can you know that's the fun part for me is trying to figure out new ways and new ideas because I feel like there's there's so many things that haven't been done yet, and uh, that's really what I founded the company on, and what I continue to strive towards. You know, I really want to continue to innovate and bring new products to the community. I know that a lot of times it's it's controversial because it's it's not widely accepted yet. When we first brought out the Squid Trainer, like aluminum trainers were really looked down on. They yeah. And then when we first brought out the Squiddy, people didn't think that plastic trainers could be could be possible. They didn't think it could be balanced. And so it feels similar you know, the pushback that we got from the initial review of the swordfish people feeling that like oh there's no way it could work or it could be balanced or durable. to me that's it's, it's funny because i've been hearing those things your entire that, career that's right so <laughs> i think that that reaction means that we're headed in a good direction no i totally agree okay so now we've looked at all of the new products yeah. i heard there was some cool stuff happening on the yeah. other side of the booth you want to go check, check that out booth. let's go see what's happening over there This is so huge. You guys really did expand. Yeah, we did. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so over here in our second booth, you guys can check out our new tuning station. Oh, so this is like a, so you can bring your Squid Industries product and get it tuned here. That's right. We can bring anything back to life and make it feel like it's brand new. Anything. Anything. Wow, okay, so if I brought, say, my original Cracker Akin is that, that a has, it's a V1, it's got a little bit of a, a little bit of looseness to it. Yeah. Do you no. think they'd be able to do it? No problem. Before I give this to them, yeah. you've got the, so what? who is this for? Is this for the Squid Industries customer? I mean, this is for anybody. It's for anyone who owns a Squid Industries product, for anyone who enjoys flipping, really. You know, we've, we're even tuning other people's products from all sorts of brands. Really? We just, we just want to help out the community. And oh. We want, we want people to enjoy their knives. Enjoy so their you're, knives. you're literally just tuning whatever over here. Yeah, I assume when we got the hardware for it, we're, we're taking it on. Dude, that's so nice. That's so cool. Yeah. yeah, and I love that you've got all of this area over here. You know, I think one of the biggest things that happens during Blade Show is all the flippers getting together and people will take, you know, their Pelican case or whatever, yeah. lay it on the floor and let people look at whatever they want to see. And so I like that you have that space over there and you can see it happening right now. Where you've just got collections being shown off and yeah. that's so cool, dude. I love that you guys have expanded this much and really provided that space for the flippers. Yeah, it's, it's nice to have that dedicated flipping area and, and not feel worried about being in somebody's way. Just having the time and space to enjoy yourself with your friends, I feel like is a big deal here at Blade Show. Dude, that's awesome well thank you so much lucas this is really really cool yeah. i'm gonna go ahead and uh wait 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 hold on hey, hey, these guys what Megalodon. oh my god i forgot oh, we forgot about the bro this is, like, totally this is like we forgot We're to talk about the mech would you want to bring that over here are you okay being in the video <laughs> all right what do we got here what we got here is a big ass ballast on trainer so this is the squid issues megalodon we introduced this at a blaze show west last year and we brought it again this year so people can enjoy it so we saw the first version of this when we were visiting you guys yep like right. a while ago that's right yep. is this this is a little more polished it is so you you were just playing with this weren't you yeah <laughs> what do you think of it it's kind of obnoxious but like that's the point you know I mean, obnoxious is a word that's for sure i i tried i tried playing with this thing when i was visiting them and it was like a really early version and what upset me was how good the tolerances are because obviously the play like it looks like a lot of play but when you consider the mass and how large the handles are this is nothing is it on bushings it's on bushings you want to take a look at the hardware let's take a look right over here oh my God. so we got a little bit of hardware right here so, oh my God! I just want to focus here on the bushing. The bushing is half inch inner diameter and three quarters inch outer diameter. What the heck? Yep, and we surface instead of lapping or sanding it down, we surface ground the size to get the right thickness. Holy crap, dude! Okay, so this thing is nuts. Yeah. 
I so I, I I would love to try to flip it, but when I actually tried to flip this at Squid Industries last time, I think I almost broke my finger. So I'm gonna I'm just gonna look at it and show you that it swings really good and is all pretty. And and that's gonna be the extent of it. Wait, let's do ASMR. Oh that's good stuff. Wait, can I do a close? <laughs> so what are these gonna retail for? About forty two hundred and sixty nine cents. I'd buy it. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you, dude. Holy yeah. cow. All right. I'm going to go ahead and, uh, I guess, bother these guys back here. I just bring them the crack yeah. racking. Go ahead. They'll uh, ask you to write down your name and uh, what you need to tune up, and they'll take care of it right away. Awesome. Okay. Well, thank you, Lucas. I really appreciate it. Yeah, I appreciate no what you've done here yeah. just for the flippers in general. And uh, I'll see you around, dude. See you around. All right, Andre. Oh, hi. Hi. Uh, Lucas sent me here. I have a V1 Cracker Akin. I think it's a V1.5, maybe? Let's see. Is it a V2? V2, yes. Oh, okay, cool. <laughs> so it's a V2 Cracker Akin. I think it needs a little bit of a tune up. It's not bad. I actually oh, did. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. But yeah, if you could tune that up for me, would I be able to get it from you later? Yeah, of course. Luckily, we have all the bushings made in house. Oh, right wow. Here. All the bushings are back in. Oh, my uh, God. We'll put you in line. We get some lovely customers. I love this, by the way. Yeah. Got this done. Dude, yeah. <laughs> thank you so much. You guys are uh, really, really awesome out here. <laughs> thank you. You too. <laughs> Sweet. All right. I'll leave you to it. All right. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Wow. That was absolutely incredible. The Squid Industries booth has absolutely spilled out and exploded from what it was previously. So it makes it really exciting to see everything that's happened and everything that's going to continue happening. I'm genuinely really excited for the swordfish. I did not expect that thing to feel nearly as good as it does, and it really feels good. So yeah, in the coming future, there's some really exciting stuff from this. Uh, while we're on the topic, I just wanted to say big thank you to our Patreon supporters. You guys allow us to come here, do all this stuff, and actually experience the show in this way. So your support means the world to us. And actually, it's been really cool meeting patrons directly here at Blade Show. It's been really, really awesome. We've met so many fans, so many Patreon supporters. It's mind boggling, but yeah. Either way, that's pretty much it for this video. Now, in a moment, it's going to cut and we'll see how good of a job they did back there with my Cracker Akin. So, let's check that out. Hey everybody, and thank you for watching. I didn't actually get to record this at Blade Show, so we're post now, but uh, I did get my Cracker Akin back and the tolerances are literally perfect. Like, there is no play on this thing and it sounds amazing. Listen to this. They did such a good job with this thing and they actually completely replaced the hardware. I don't know how well you can see that, but they completely replaced the hardware with the new Squid Industries hardware that I'm pretty sure they're making themselves. So yeah, really, really impressed with uh, what they managed to do there at the tune-up booth. And uh, I'm very thankful for it because they gave this thing brand new life. So yeah, thanks Squid. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Peace.